This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. I want to take this time and welcome you all to our Wednesday webinar. My name is Michael Wimberly, and I will be conducting the webinar today. Uh, today's topic is SolidWorks Data Management and Windchill. So, of course, the overall objective is to review and demonstrate Windchill data management inside of Windchill. The general layout for this is going to be, of course, a general introduction of myself and Boundary Systems. Basic topic overview, and of course, the most important piece of it being the product demonstration. After that, there'll be a QA. and uh, If you have any questions, you can ask those at the time. I do ask that if you do have questions in your um, webinar uh, dialogue, there is an area in there for your questions or a chat area that you can go through and ask the questions. I will answer those uh, as they come in or as appropriate. Sometimes I can hold those off until the end. If I need to answer them right away, then I will do that as well. All right, so for myself, my name is Michael Wimberly. Once again, I am a senior technical specialist here at Boundary Systems. I've been working with PTC products for over 20 years now. I am a certified trainer in Creo and Windchill, as well as certified implementation specialist for Windchill. Boundary Systems as a whole um, is a PTC partner with 20 plus years of experience in the channel with PTC and technical specialists with 20, uh, 10 to 20 plus years uh, in uh, working with PTC products as well. Some of our major accreditations as Boundary Systems is PTC Software Reseller, PTC Preferred Service Provider, uh, also a certified training partner, authorized training centers, maintenance provider, and Windchill certified implementer. Uh, jumping back real quick to the uh, training, uh, we do have training centers across the country so we can um, have we may have a class somewhere close to you or even better we actually have a mobile training center where we can actually bring the class to you so if there's something that you're looking to have and you want to have it on site you can contact us and we can actually um, arrange to have the training actually at your facility um, if you want more information on that you of course you can ask that um, as well towards the end of the session as well and as far as our current support, we are actually supporting 100 plus wind chill locations in North America currently. Uh, our mission overall as Boundary Systems is to have the most technical expertise on PTC products of any company in the world. Uh, we are working really hard to do that. We have quite a few of our technical specialists who are SMEs, uh, uh, subject matter experts in different areas. Uh, so we do try to have a, a diverse group of people that can actually help to solve your needs. Uh, we also want to understand what your needs are. And uh, once again, by understanding those needs, uh, we can actually give you better recommendations on what pieces of software you may wanna go through and incorporate, whether it be on the Creo side or on the windshield side, um, as long as we can discuss with you and understand your needs, we can better recommend what it is you need to be using and with those recommendations, we do come to try to guarantee the success of that solution. So through mentoring, through um, on-site training, uh, well, of course, the actual implementation of the piece of software, whatever it may be, but we strive to guarantee the success of those products. So we don't just try to sell you something and kind of scoot you off. We do want to work with you to make sure that it actually um, is implemented properly into your uh, company. And of course, with all of that, the overall goal of us and of course, as a, your company is of course to decrease the costs, increase time to market, and also increase the quality of your product. So we wanna make sure that what we're implementing um, helps your overall process. And once again, allows you to um, take your products to market faster, as well as even having a better improved product by having a more seamless integration of softwares within your facility. If you have any additional technical questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, once again, my name is Michael Wimberly. I can be reached at 513-415-0747, or I can be reached through email, which is mwimberly at boundarysys.com. Or if you have any sales related questions, you can also contact our sales department at 440-274-0291, or you can send them an email at sales at boundarysys.com. So once again, the overall goal of this webinar is to discuss how to manage SolidWorks data in Windchill. 
So with this, we're going to actually um, look at how we can integrate Windchill into SolidWorks and actually use SolidWorks to access the database to find and save and store information directly inside of Windchill. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the demonstration. So I'll go ahead and start up SolidWorks. And we've already set up SolidWorks to connect to Windchill. So what you're seeing here is a connection that is actually connecting to what's called the Workgroup Manager, which is um, an, a separate application, but that is our liaison between SolidWorks and Windchill. Um, in Creo, it has an embedded browser. So since um, SolidWorks does not have that embedded browser, then it uses the Workgroup Manager to be able to view the information inside the workspace or even browse with inside the database. All right, so here's SolidWorks. We've logged in. And as I said before, this is connected directly to Windchill. So when I come over here and I select to open up a file, of course, I'm going to browse my hard drive. But as you can see, the first thing it does, it takes me to my workspace. My workspace is my connection to Windchill. So any files that I may have pulled down from Windchill to work in will be stored inside of my workspace. I currently don't have anything to go in and open. So I'm actually going to come over here and browse directly into Windchill. So I'm going to go and select the database, which is a common space, and then go into my products to go in and actually find the files that I'm looking for. So here are my actual SolidWorks files. Once again, it's not converting them to anything. It is a native SolidWorks file that is once again stored directly inside of Windchill. I'll go ahead and open up this assembly. Now, what it does is it takes that assembly, and I just mentioned opening up files from my workspace. Well, it's actually going to take those files and download them into my workspace so I can now access them through uh, SolidWorks. So down here at the bottom of my screen, you'll see SolidWorks. This over here is my actual workgroup manager. And when I go in and select on workspace, I will actually see the files that I just opened inside of Korea, I'm sorry, inside of SolidWorks downloaded into my workspace. So these are those SolidWorks files that I'm currently working on. So at this point, I will work on it like I normally would. So I will go through, I will find the file. So maybe this file is the one I want to look at. I can actually, of course, open it up in SolidWorks. I'm working in SolidWorks just like I normally would. I'm not doing anything different here. I want to go through and make a couple modifications or at least a modification uh, to the model. So I'm going to go ahead and change one of these values. Go ahead and update that. Great. Now, there is one factor that you will see is because these, these items are actually controlled by Windchill. When I come up here to go in and select my save, because I have not checked this file out, which means I'm taking this file and I'm basically taking possession of this file. Adding it into my workspace just allows me to go through and view it. As you can see, I can make modifications to it. But at this point, if I want to save it, and I'm only saving it locally right now, but I also want to let other people who may see this file in the database know that I'm actually working on this particular file. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to go ahead and check this file out, which once again will give me the possession of this file. So I'm going to go ahead and select OK to go ahead and check the file out. It's now saving this file to my workspace. I can see that everything has been saved properly. Now, when I go back to my workspace, I can see that that file that I've just um, saved has now been checked out. That's what this little icon is here. It's also been modified. And this talks about um, it being uploaded. So right now, my changes just reside on my hard drive. I can do an upload, which this workspace that I'm, that I'm actually working in right now also has a place in the database. So if I upload it, it'll also store it securely into the database. But this is what I see when I'm actually looking at this file inside of uh, my workspace. If I come over here, um, I'm going to go back into my products. I'm going to go back into that actual folder directly inside of Windchill. And then once again, this is, that's not that one, there it is. This is the actual file that I'm currently working on. And this is what I'll see. Um, other people will actually see a different little icon that will be like a little person. And when they hold their mouse over top of it, it'll actually, it'll actually tell them who has that file checked out. 
So just by simply working inside the working with that inside of Windchill, we have all the functionality available that we would normally have inside of Windchill uh, with with basically our Creo files. So all that is still there. So we'll check it out and everybody can actually still see that we're actively working on that file. That way somebody else doesn't try to make changes to that file. Now, once I'm done with this file, you know, at this point, as I, as I was mentioning before, because we do have a direct connection to Windchill, uh, it actually has a Windchill tab. Inside of this Windchill tab will allow me to go through and now use my Windchill functionality. So I can go in and open create a new CAD document. There's an open from Windchill. There's an auto check-in or a custom check-in. If I knew I wanted to go through and make changes to this file, as I open it up, I can go ahead and check it out. I can also check it out directly from my workspace when I actually download it. Uh, update any active models. What that basically does is if I actually have a model that's been changed, maybe I don't have it checked out, but someone else has it checked out and they want to go through and they've made changes to it and I need their changes into my my assembly so I can go in and incorporate what they have. I can go in and update the, the active model or once again, update all models, which will check anything that may be out of date and now synchronize it with my workspace. And once again, inside of Windchill, I'm sorry, inside of SolidWorks. And then there's the actual work group manager, the server manager, that's more of a registration piece of it. And then with this, I am gonna go in and select save uh, viewables with the model, which means when I go through and I save this file, is going to save it and uh, is going to save a viewable that I can actually use in or see inside of Windchill as well. And that, that works for me if I don't have what's called a um, publisher set up that will automatically publish the viewables. All right, so at this point, once again, when I save it, I can now at this point uh, check it in. So I can do an auto check in of this particular file. If the changes that I want are appropriate, I'll say auto check in. And once again, it uploads it, saves it, and now it's checking in the file. That's the benefit of this, is it shows you all the steps that it's done. And you can see that the check-in has been successful, which means now when I go back to my workspace, I still have it checked out, but it's no longer modified and it no longer needs to be uploaded. So now I have a newer version of that file uh, directly inside of, well, this is, I'm sorry, this is actually inside the database. So I can see that when I go in and actually refresh this, it's currently at 1.1. One, one. I should now see that that file um, lost the part number. My apologies. Engine block. That one. Yep. So when I go to that particular file, A different one. Once again, my apologies on that. I'm going to go in and search inside of here for engine, and this one is the engine block. Engine block demo, but it's the engine dash block. It's that one. There it is right there. So once again, I apologize for that. Um, but here's the actual file itself that I've gone in and uploaded. And you can see that that's now at 1.2. When I go to the information page for that particular item, uh, when I go to the history of that particular file, I can see that it does show basically today me checking that particular file in. So I can see the history of that file. That's once again, the benefit of Windchill is that it does keep a record of when the files were checked in and it keeps the history of those files. So if I need ever need to go back to 1.1, 1.1 is available for me to go through and look at. I can use that as a starting point for a new one to go and do a save as on and now go in and use that for a starting point for another design. Um, same thing here in my workspace in my workspace, it'll also be updated so I don't see that item actually listed inside of my workspace. I'm sorry, I don't see it modified inside of my workspace. So, and that once again is this file here. All right, so once again, the benefit of working inside of 
uh, with wind chill is you have all the benefits of wind chill. So if I need to go through and revise a file, I can go in and revise a file directly. So if I want to go through and make changes and the changes that I'm making are not, uh, I can't just simply bump the iteration of it. I need to go in and revise that. I have the ability to go in and revise any of my files inside the database. I can also go through and use all the promotion requests. So I can go through and promote it from our design state to you know, the production release state, the prototype state, whatever it may be. Um, so I'll go ahead and open this up so we can actually see what its life cycle is. So we can come down here and we can see, yep. So it, we can go in and promote it from design to prototype to release, whatever is necessary. Or once again, if I need to go in and revise this file, I can go from 1.2 to 2.1, you know, to go through and update its revision history as well. But once again, the overall benefit is that we still, we're still working in SOLIDWORKS. All we're doing now is managing our data uh, inside of Windchill so that we don't lose any of our information. So everything that we need is stored here. The relationships between our files are maintained. Um, so we can go through and um, properly um, maintenance everything. So we don't need to go through and have them on our hard drive. We don't need to use any other system to go through and control this. We have Windchill, we have SolidWorks, we have the work group manager that basically allows us to go through and find and load up any files. So that is once again, one of the great or the great benefit of the integration between Windchill and SolidWorks is just simply the seamlessness of it. As I said, you have the PTC Windchill tab that gives you direct access to anything. If there's other files that I want to open, then of course I can go in and say open from Windchill and it'll take me directly into Windchill. And there I have my option for Windchill cabinets or from my workspace, which currently is looking in my workspace. From here, I can once again, just go into different products and go in and find the files that I needed to go through and find. So once again, here is the great benefit of everything is that it's all seamless. Everything is stored in Windchill, but I have direct access to Windchill from SOLIDWORKS. I don't have to do anything special to go through and access my files. They're all right there for me to go through and use. So all SOLIDWORKS functionality, you're just connecting everything through Windchill. All right, so at this point, I will ask, sorry, if there are any questions. Once again, if you do have questions, go ahead and enter those questions into the um, chat area and uh, I will answer them as they come in. So one of the questions is what versions of SOLIDWORKS are supported with this? So the versions of SOLIDWORKS are based on your version of Windchill. So the latest versions of Windchills, such as right now, the latest version of Windchill is 1.1. 1.1 .1. Uh, .1 for, at least for SOLIDWORKS, will support um, the latest two versions, two or three versions of SOLIDWORKS. Um, as you go back further, you know, you'll get like the one that I'm using right now, is, I'm using Windchill 11 and I'm actually using SOLIDWORKS, I think it was 2014. So that is supported in 11, um, but you're probably, of course, using one of the newer versions of SOLIDWORKS. So it's, it, it's also supported in 11 as well. So those versions correspond with, you know, when the software is written for the work group manager and what version of SOLIDWORKS is out at that point in time. So the latest is usually with the latest. And then once again, uh, the older versions may be updated as well if there's maintenance releases still, still being done on those. So Probably 11 will also work with some with the latest versions of uh, SOLIDWORKS simply because it's still active and they are continuing to do maintenance on that. So, so yeah, so the latest versions should work in 11.1 and as well as 11. Um, all right, any additional questions on anything with that? Is the work group manager 
extra. Uh, it depends on what version of wind chill you actually purchase. So if we go all the way down, so there's a version of wind chill that is that we call Intralink. Um, that is basically the lowest version of wind chill that you can purchase. Uh, with that, there is no uh, work, group in, uh, work group manager. The Intralink is strictly for Creo files. So that version of wind chill, you can't go in and actually use the work group manager for. But then you also have a version that is um, uh, PDM Essentials, uh, which does actually have work group managers associated with that. Um, there are actually some that come with PDM Essentials, but it's also kind of a stripped down version of wind chill. So you don't have full wind chill functionality, but you will have some of the work group managers um, associated with that by default. Um, and then, of course, you have the full blown wind chill. Now, with full blown wind chill, you do have um, all the wind chill functionality, but some of the work group managers will be extra. So, you have all the basically wind chill enterprise functionality, but when you're when you want to go through an integrated additional software, uh, that will be extra. Uh, I don't know the pricing. You will need to get in contact with our salespeople um, for that. Um, and they can actually give you the quotes on that. I just know the technical sides of it. I don't, I try not to memorize any of the pricing. I'll let them handle that side of it. All right. If there are no more questions, then I will once again say thank you for your time um, in viewing our Wednesday webinar. And don't forget that um, if you go to our website, boundarysys.com uh, webinars, you will actually be able to see what webinars we have coming up. Um, also, uh, Boundary Sys events will also show you any of the hands-on workshops that we are also hand holding as well. So we are holding hands-on workshops for Creo 5. It gives you an opportunity to go through and um, touch Creo 5, some of the new enhancements inside of Creo 5. Um, and then we also have an afternoon session where we kind of deal with, uh, depending on how we're doing it, uh, one of them may deal with mechanism design, the other one may deal with uh, Creo Simulate. So it depends on which one we actually go through and set up. And then, of course, we also have our training schedule. Uh, you can also see what training classes we're holding at which training site. And if you do want to have a custom training class, um, or I should say an on-site training class, you can also contact us as well. Um, and we can customize classes. Uh, we just need to work with you to figure out what it is we need to go in and do um, or what information we want to go through and cover so we can actually uh, customize it appropriately. So once again, visit our website, uh, boundarysys.com. And then once again, you go to webinars, events, training schedules. Um, and we also have a YouTube page. So if you go into YouTube and you search for Boundary Systems, you will find our YouTube page. Um, inside of there, you will see this video. Um, you'll also see previous videos that we've recorded as well um, with diff on different topics. So you can definitely go through and, and see some of the things that we've done in the past. Maybe there's an another area that you're interested in uh, that we've already done a webinar on. Or if there is an area that you're interested in and we don't have a webinar on it, uh, feel free to contact me or contact Once Again Sales, and we can uh, look at potentially creating a webinar for that. Uh, because maybe if it's something you're looking for, maybe somebody else's as well. So it may be something that's worth doing a webinar on. So once again, if you do have any questions, feel free to contact me, uh, Michael Wimberly, 513-415-0747, or mwimberly at boundarysys.com, sales at 440-274-0291, or sales at boundarysys.com. We also have our tech support line where if you have any technical questions that you want to go through and ask us, we have two methods of go through and, and, and doing that. One of them is simply going to our support page, which is support.boundarysys.com. That will take you to our ticketing system. When you enter in a ticket, it will go into our system. It will then be notified or our technical specialist will be notified. We always have an engineer of the week which is basically somebody that's monitoring all of that and will answer the questions if, they're, if they can. If not, then of course, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, where we have people uh, that have expertise in other areas. 
So we will have the best person working on whatever your support ticket may be. Or of course, you can also go on an email at support at boundarysys.com. And that will also go to our support team as well. And we will all get notified of that. And once again, the appropriate individual will take control of that uh, ticket or that email and get back with you with the appropriate information. So once again, I thank you for your time. Uh, you all have a great remainder of the afternoon and we look forward to you being on our next webinar. Thank you.